Today I'm going to be covering my gaming machine. This machine is actually quite an old machine by today's standards as it has an original version of the i7 chip fitted. I originally put this machine together back in 2010, I would say towards the end of 2010. That was when this chip and motherboard came out. The machine was originally housed in a Cooler Master Cosmos case and back in 2012 when the Cosmos 2 came out I then upgraded to the Cosmos 2. Before I cover the machine itself, I'm quickly going to cover some of the peripherals that are fitted. The machine has a G19 gaming keyboard fitted, a G5 gaming mouse. The monitor is an Apple Cinema display, which is running at a resolution of 2560 by 1440. The sound is handled by a Meridian F80, and attached to the F80 is a Bowers & Wilkins PV1D subwoofer. Okay, I'm quickly going to open the case for you. And you can see that this is a rather large case. For those of you who have silicon graphics machines or have seen a silicon graphics Onyx 2, I would say that this case is more than half the size of an Onyx 2, so it's a rather large case. I'm just going to move the camera forward to give you a better view. Okay, the motherboard fitted to the machine is a Asus Rampage 3 Extreme. It has the full complement of 24 gigabytes of RAM fitted, and I've got Corsair Dominator RAM fitted here. The CPU itself is the Intel 980X, which was the extreme edition of the original i7 chip, and it is cooled by a Corsair H100 liquid cooling system. The graphics card is the GeForce Titan X, and... The main system drive is the OCZ ReverDrive 3X2, which is a PCI Express based SSD. The machine also has two extra drives fitted. I've got a Western Digital Velociraptor drive fitted in this bay, and I've got a Corsair SSD fitted in this bay. The machine is fitted with a 1100 watt power supply, which is sufficient to run the machine. Okay, this covers the inside of the machine. I will now demonstrate some of the software to you. The tests that I'm going to be carrying out are Atto drive tests on the various drives. I'm going to do a blender test on the machine. And the game that I'm going to test is Fallout 76, which was a game that came out within the last month. Before I continue with the demonstration, I'm quickly going to cover some of the hardware that was installed in this machine during its life, and I'm going to start off with the original memory kit that I had fitted to the machine. When I initially built this machine, it was fitted with this 6GB triple channel Corsair Dominator GT DDR3 memory kit. This was the fastest DDR3 memory available at the time, and it served me very well for the first few years. However, as time passed and games became more complex, they required more than 6 gigabytes of memory. So when I approached the supplier requesting an additional memory kit, they could no longer supply this memory, and I therefore had to settle for a 24 gigabyte triple channel Corsair Dominator memory kit operating at a lower frequency than this memory does. So food for thought for those of you who want to build a machine up, know up front exactly how much memory you want to fit to your machine, and buy that memory up front and I would say in this day and age you're looking at between 16 and 32 gigabytes of memory and I would say that you should rather opt to get less high speed memory than too much low speed memory. Next I'm going to cover one of the original graphics cards that I had installed in the machine. When I initially put this machine together it was fitted with two of these XFX Radeon HD 5970 Black Edition cards and I must say that the machine's performance with these two cards fitted was rather disappointing as I often found myself having to, should I say, disable the secondary card just to enable the Crossfire system to operate correctly. At a certain point one of the cards developed a fan rattle and when I approached the supplier to get a replacement card they could no longer supply me with a Black Edition card so they offered me a GTX 590 as a replacement card. 
Seeing that I did not suffer such a large performance hit with the loss of my secondary black edition card, I decided to try the GTX 590 out. And I must say, that was a truly awesome card, which served me well for a good number of years. I unfortunately ended up by selling that card, so I can't display it here. At around about the same time that I was operating the GTX 590, I managed to obtain an Asus Ares limited edition card. And I must say that this is one of the most well-built cards that I've ever seen. The heat sinks are made of solid copper. And the card itself weighs more than a kilogram. And I would say that its weight is probably about twice that of the XFX HD 5970 Black Edition card. I ran this card in my machine for a while. And I must say that although it's a good card, the driver support was rather bad for it at the time. And its performance didn't quite match that of the GTX 590. So I ended up by going back to the GTX 590. The next card that I fitted to the machine was the GTX 690. That was also an awesome card, and that card is currently fitted in my Alienware machine. I'm now going to continue with the software demonstration. The first test that I'm going to carry out for you is the Atto Disk test. I've already carried out the test on the Velociraptor as well as the Corsair SSD in order to save some time, and the Velociraptor peaked with regards to its write at 137.14 megabytes per second and its read at 140.15 megabytes per second. The Corsair SSD, which is a first generation SSD, peaked with a write speed of 196.55 megabytes per second and a read speed of 228 megabytes per second. Okay, so let's see how the ReverDrive 3x2 does. So I'm going to start the test on the system disk. Okay, and if you compare it already, at 512 bits, your write was 15.38 megabytes per second on this drive. And if I compare it to the Velociraptor, it was 4.64 megabytes per second. And on the other SSD, it was Okay, we're already at a speed which tops both of the other drives. And with a 64 kilobit file, we are writing at 892 megabytes per second and reading at 800 megabytes per second. And with a 128 kilobit file, we've just broken the 1 gigabit barrier, or 1 gigabyte barrier, sorry. Okay, and at 512 kilobytes, we are writing at 1.06 gigabytes per second and reading at 1.38 gigabytes per second. Okay, at 2 megabytes, we're pretty much topping out the read function on the drive. We still have a bit of a way to go when it comes to the write speed, but I would say the drive tops out at about 1.46 gigabytes per second. And you've just got to consider this. I've had this drive in this machine since the year 2012. So this is pretty remarkable performance from such a drive. I realize that modern drives have caught up and probably surpassed this drive when it comes to their performance, but this is pretty damn good performance if you consider the age of this drive. Ok, 
Okay, with a 24 megabyte file, you are writing at 1.28 gigabytes per second and reading at 1.46 gigabytes per second. Okay, so when it comes to the drive's performance, it's right peaked with a 32 megabyte file at 1.3 gigabytes per second, and its peak read speed was 1.46 gigabytes per second. So this just shows you the performance that you get from a PCI Express based SSD. The next test that I'm going to carry out is the Blender test, and I'm going to carry out the exact same test that I've done on all the other machines that I've tested with Blender. And that is test.blend. Okay, and this version of Blender automatically detects the machine to have 12 threads, so I'll keep this setting. And I'm going to render with the default settings first to see how the machine performs. And just remember, each one of these blocks has a thread associated with it, so once the block is rendered, it won't be allocated more of the processor's power. Okay, so that rendered in 17 seconds and 0.3 split seconds. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly break the screen up into smaller blocks to see how this affects the rendering performance. Okay, so this should allow the processor to make more effective use of its core, so let's see how it goes. Okay, that frame rendered in 13 seconds and 82 split seconds. So you can see from this that Splitting the rendering into smaller sections allows the CPU to make more effective use of its cores and threads. Okay, I'm quickly going to try one more thing. And I'm going to disable the anti-aliasing. Okay, and just see how quickly it renders. Okay, that frame was rendered in 3 seconds and 86 split seconds. This brings me to the final demonstration of the video, where I demonstrate how the machine performs when playing Fallout 76. And just bear in mind that this is one of the latest and greatest games, and the core of this system was assembled back in 2010. Before I start the game, I'm quickly going to show you my display settings. The resolution is 16 by 9, which is 2560 by 1440, and I've preset all the settings to ultra. So let's start the game. Okay, I'm going to cut the video here while it loads to save some time and then I'll start it again once the game is fully loaded. Okay, the game is now fully loaded, so let's see how she performs. And I'd say that I'm getting pretty damn reasonable performance out of this machine as far as this game is concerned. Okay, I'm currently getting 60 frames a second. The GPU memory which is in use currently is 7 gigabytes. I'm 
I'm just going to go a little bit deeper into the city to see how the system performs there. Okay, we're now at 8.1 gigabytes of graphics memory in use. So, if you have a graphics card in your machine which has 8 gigabytes of memory or less at the moment, you would not be able to play the game as it's being played now because I'm currently at 8.4 gigabytes of graphics memory in use currently. So even though the system is fitted with a rather ancient processor and motherboard, the fact that it's got a GTX Titan X fitted to it makes games such as this rather playable. Okay, still at 8.2 gigabytes of video memory. And as far as system memory is concerned, I'm running at 6.9 gigabytes currently. Okay, I'm quickly going to fast travel to my camp just to show you how the system performs when I'm outside of the city environment. And there we go. Okay, the GPU memory in use now currently 4.6 gigabytes. It's going to use some right away to get use of, rid of my radiation poisoning. Okay, so all in all, this is pretty good performance from this machine. And this game is very playable. And this concludes my demonstration of this game. I'm now going to conclude the video by quickly showing you the spec of the system with regards to how CPU-Z as well as GPU-Z see the system. Okay, according to CPU-Z, the system is fitted with an Intel Core i7 Extreme 980X and it's currently running at 1.6 GHz. The processor is set to speed step, so it's alternating between 3.3 GHz and 1.6 GHz currently. Okay, the main board is a Rampage 3 Extreme. The memory, I've got 24 GB of memory fitted. And graphics, it's the NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan X. Okay, I'm just going to bring up GPU-Z.
Okay, and again, it confirms it's a Titan X, and the vendor is EVGA. So it's a EVGA Superclocked Edition version of the GTX Titan X. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.